Stay with the theme of rotten apples. It is a Monday. Time for Political View, a wrap of the latest political developments. And of course, the fallout continues after the release of an explosive report into the collapse of VBS Mutual Bank. An advocate who penned the report, Terry Matao, details an estimated 2 billion rand was stolen from the bank, recommending that more than 50 people be charged. He found that municipal officials were bribed to ensure that municipalities deposited large sums into the bank. Matao finds the bank was also looted by the chair and those close to him. And ultimately it was liquidated. It could not pay depositors. The list of those implicated is long, including KPMG as well as the brother of EFF Deputy President Floyd Shivambu, Brian Shivambu. Brian Shivambu denying he received anything from the bank. Uh, Floyd Shivambu saying that claims that he received 10 million are false. He has spoken to the SABC. The PIC is also mentioned in the report in the Mail and Guardian has been looking into other possible links to discuss. We're joined by Mail and Guardian investigative journalist Sabelo Skiti. Great to have you with us, Sabelo. Good evening, Francis, and good evening to the listeners. Let's first start with the EFF. So they're going to uh, do a press conference tomorrow to clear the fog. What are you expecting? Well, I think um, I look forward to hearing what they have to say. Um, I expect that uh, the commander in chief is going to be in his usual, very lively self. Um, and is probably going to have some choice words for the media on this one. Um, I think we're well, getting to the nuts and bolts of it. They are probably going to explain, um, you know, the relationship between the EFF and Brian Shivambu, um, who we understand at some stage was an employee of the organization, and they are probably going to seek to distance um, him and his business, you know, um, with VBS and other, um, you know, companies from the party itself and from the brother Floyd Shivambu. Mm -hmm. um, what you're likely to hear is, you know, an attempt to sort of um, convince us that, you know, um, some of the funds that did um, pass between the two were probably nothing more than brotherly loans um, that don't require any further scrutiny. Which Floyd Shivambu has said. Uh, how strong is the evidence that Brian Shivambu, uh, he has a case to answer because he's in the report uh, taking money for no good reason, according uh, to the Saab report. How strong is the evidence that that money was then channeled to Floyd Shivambu and the EFF? Well, I look at the moment, um, that is something that a lot of um, you know, journalists are still looking into. Um, there was, of course, the Daily Maverick article um, very late on Thursday afternoon, sort of, um, you know, making you know more definite claims about a specific amount of cash um, that passed you know from the younger brother to the older brother um, we've certainly seen no evidence of that but i mean that doesn't mean that it, it hasn't happened um, from what we've seen they definitely are strong indications that some of the money did go to floyd shivambu um, and in fact we hope you know with the, with, the, with the coming of time to show if there's any link you know that's stronger between floyd and his younger brother you, you are looking at the bigger picture as well, and you have these text messages uh, purportedly between Floyd Chivambu and a businessman with links to the PIC. Explain why those are important. Well, I mean, this is why, you know, I, I was saying that uh, we will be looking further and hope to uncover much more about Floyd's role, um, you know, not only in defense of, you know, the PIC and VBS, but also um, in terms of how much does or has he actually done on behalf of his brother um, in terms of that business? So the article, um, Francis, is, 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 is very straightforward in the sense that we were able to get in evidence that has been given to advocate Jeff Badlender, um, who is currently, you know, un doing a forensic investigation into PIC matters. Um, contained in this pack that he was given um, were text messages that show a communication between Mr. Shavambu, this is Floyd, um, and a businessman by the name of Lawrence Mulawudzi. Now, Mr. Mulawudzi um, is a very key player in the VBS saga in that one of the main allegations against uh, the VBS CEO, Dr. Dan Majilla, um, involves Mr. Mulawudzi and the, and, and, and the possibility of a 300,000 rand that was paid by Mr. Mulawudzi to another individual who is known and close um, to Dr. Dan allegedly. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Mr. Mlawuzi himself is also a beneficiary of some funding from the PIC, um, having received uh, between 1.7 and 1.8 billion rand to purchase a stake in uh, Total South Africa's BE vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, so what we saw there is that Mr. Shivambu, for, for some reason which we can't explain, and we placed this to be sometime in March 2017, sends a text to Mr. Mlawuzi with his younger brother's business banking details.
Um, we assume that that must have been a request for money in one way or the other. There's been ex an explanation from Mr. Mlawuzi who says that uh, from time to time his company would engage uh, Floyd Chivambu's younger brother's company. Of course, this company is called Grand Azania. Mm. So, so the implication is money uh, from a suspicious person may be play, paid to Brian Chivambu. Floyd Chivambu gave the bank account, so maybe he's using his brother as a conduit. Is, is that a stretch? Well, I mean, look, from, from what we can definitely say um, right now is that there definitely seems to be links um, with, you know, between PIC and VBS, not only in, you know, what was uncovered by Advocate Mutao, but also in, you know, um, other individuals that um, have links to both organizations, Mr. Mlawuzi with the PIC and then uh, Mr. Shivambu uh, with VBS. Mm. Um, and it seems as if the middleman for now um, is, is none other than Floyd Shivambu himself. Of course, Mr. Mlawuzi say um, he and Mr. Shivambu go back many years. Um, they have a friendship that uh, has gone back a couple of years. And, and let's be clear, I mean, the evidence against Floyd Shivambu himself, it's not concrete, so, so these are our claims. But, but what would be the motives? Uh, what power did he have in, in VBS? Are we talking about municipalities? Well, I mean, I don't know if you want to go as far as to say, you know, it's definitely municipalities. Um, but if you look at uh, Mr. Ro, uh, Mr. Shavambu's stature in society and in politics, um, it definitely would not hurt to have an individual with, you know, that considerable amount of power and influence um, batting for an organization which, you know, we now know was... Um, you know, basically looting, you know, state funds um, mm -hmm. through VBS. And, and the PRC is interesting. So Dan Majila, the CEO, was mentioned in the report. Uh, some, uh, somebody said that money was earmarked for him. I think it was Dr. Dan. Yes. But, but we have no knowledge of whether he received the money or knew about it. So, yes. so that's where we are in the report. Yes, and of course, uh, it's important to note that he himself um, you know, he's denying, you know, any links to any cash that would have flowed from VBS to the PIC. But I think there's just too many question marks um, to let this go so easily, Francis. This is not the first sort of investment that the PIC has had, um, which can't be explained on a business um, perspective and what you see then is that it's very clear that very little due diligence was done. Mm -hmm. um, if any had been done, the PIC would have seen the incredible risk in investing in an organization which was illegally holding funds that could not be deposited mm -hmm. that belonged to municipalities. Even bigger than that, it would mean Dan Majila was accepting bribes. But there's, there's no evidence, just somebody mm. saying that that was just the intention, I guess. Mm. Well, I think, I mean, there's a lot more to come, um, you know, from this, from this v VBS saga. Um, it's important to note that right now, um, I would even go as far as to call this report preliminary, uh, primarily because, as pointed out by, you know, the people that are implicated, no one has had a chance to come through yet and explain themselves. Um, and of course, I mean, what we've seen of the report is more like a summary because we've not seen the actual technical and the documents that back up the claims that are, give, mm. that are, that are made uh, by Advocate Mutao. No doubt that all of that information is probably contained in whatever representations will be made to law enforcement agencies that can take this thing forward. Uh, and then journalists have a bit of scope to, to investigate. I mean, there is political heat on the PIC already, although it's, it's producing good returns. Like you said, so many questions. What is the potential fallout here for the PIC? Well, I think um, whichever way, you know, this penny drops um, this time around, there will be much more scrutiny um, on the PIC. This is not the first scandal um, in recent months. Um, if you look back at, you know, um, uh, the, the, the issues around uh, former finance minister Atlanta Nina's son, for instance, mm -hmm. you've got um, the financing of, you know, the, the technologies companies like Amata, IO Technology as well. You've got other links of, there's a lot of investments that the PIC has made in recent history that have come to cost it billions and billions of rands. So, I think no matter what happens with the VBS matter, as far as the PIC go, there will definitely be much more scrutiny in terms of how do they go about making these investments, the due diligence that's supposed to take place. And, and you're using documents that uh, will be used by Jeff Budlander. Where is, is that? I mean, is this a potentially explosive investigation again? Well, I mean, the, the Jeff Budlander investigation is a quite interesting one. So it begins as an investigation that's, you know, looking into very clear allegations. 
Islands um, that involve uh, Dr. Dan Majila um, and his relationship with a certain woman by the name of Pretty Low. Um, this is the woman, of course, who is alleged to have had Dr. Dan ask for 300,000 Rand for her from one of you know the PIC investees. But the sort of information in, in, from what we've learned that has come out um, is definitely either going to widen the scope of Dr. Badliner's invest, uh, Advocate Badliner's investigation, or it will certainly lead to him making you know wider recommendations, of course, um, for that commission of inquiry that the president wants to take place at the PIC. How implicated is the former president, uh, Jacob Zuma, reports coming out that he wasn't paying VBS for, for that very high-profile loan to, to deal with Nkandla? Well, I think, I mean, if, if, if you look at um, the, the wider narrative um, about, you know, how state institutions during his two terms as state president um, had become weakened, um, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely something that you can always align to the Jacob Zuma administration. But he is an individual, of course, um, it's, it's, it's through that loan, that you know, um, mortgage that he got from VBS and the fact that it now seems that he wasn't servicing it. Um, it's no surprise to some of us. I mean, um, at the time that was announced, you could see that um, it made no sense because the man clearly, you know, would not have received anything similar to that from any of yeah. the commercial Questions banks. Questions around creditworthiness. Yes, yeah. yes, of course. And then you saw in part of that 53 that were listed by advocate Terry Mota, who is also a gentleman by the name of um, Sizwe Shezi. Um, who also, you know, has links to the Jacob Zuma Foundation, or was a former was, was a former um, head of, oh, I'm sorry, the Jacob Zuma Education Trust. Um, he was a former chair of that. So there definitely are many links that lead um, to Nkandla in this. And as I said, I think as time goes on and as we unpack the detail um, of, of of what happened at VBS, you're likely to see uh, more political players. Being All right. So in. you're saying this is going to get bigger and bigger. What do you make of the current president's denial? That that he knew uh, what was going on here? Well, I mean, um, to be honest with you, I mean, when, when I saw the article on Sunday in the City Press, um, it sort of seemed to rely on a source that had heard from someone who was in the meeting. Um, there was not enough for me sort of to say, um, where was the meeting, what day was it? Mm. Um, so I'm not surprised that the presidency, you know, is coming out and saying they are not aware of this meeting and any information that had been given to the president. Of course, I mean, if you look at uh, the implications of it, if it is true, um, it's quite damning for, for, for the president because this is someone that allegedly brought you information pertaining to, you know, a crime. Um, mm. and, 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 you, and you did nothing when there is an obligation for you, even as an ordinary citizen, then that you come across any instance where you know of criminal activity. You are obliged to report it. Um, and I mean, if you look at it uh, from a political perspective, um, there are those people that will say they really don't trust this new Tumamina era of the ANC because for many years, um, Cyril Ramaphosa had been deputy president to Jacob Zuma. Mm. Um, and up until very late um, in the Jacob Zuma administration, um, was quite happy to sit back and, you know, look at a lot of uh, strong allegations swirling around the president, swirling around senior ANC leaders and cabinet ministers. And, and not resigning. That's for another day, but, uh, but thank you for your analysis. So many implicated in the VBS saga. Uh, Mail and Guardian investigative journalist Sabelo Skiti uh, suggesting uh, that maybe down the line there will be even more.